Hello everyone, my name is Evan McMurray. I'm a fourth year medical student here at Wake Forest School of Medicine. And this is my abstract presentation entitled, Heart Pathway Implementation Safely Reduces Hospitalizations at One Year in Patients with Acute Chest Pain. This is a project I worked on in conjunction with Dr. Jason Stapira, Dr. Simon Mahler, and the other authors I've listed on this slide. Now in terms of background information, there are eight to 10 million visits to the emergency department each year for chest pain. And historically in the US, there's a big concern about missing acute coronary syndrome in these patients. And that's resulted in over 50% of them receiving serial cardiac biomarkers, stress testing, and, and or cardiac angiography. And yet, less than 10% of these patients ultimately end up getting diagnosed with ACS. Further complicating the picture is that the usual care guidelines from the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association recommend that chest pain patients with any concern for acute coronary syndrome should receive serial cardiac markers followed by some form of provocative objective cardiac testing. However, the issue of using the strategy on the low risk chest pain population is that it unnecessarily uses resources on those least likely to benefit. For instance, it leads to higher rates of false positive or non-diagnostic tests and all the other potential harmful downstream consequences of over testing and over treatment. And so that led to the creation of the heart pathway, which is an accelerated diagnostic protocol that allows for discharge of low risk patients without the need for additional cardiac testing. Now I've listed some of the early studies here on the right side of the slide, but in summary, the data has shown that within 30 days, uh, the heart pathway is safe in that the rates of death and myocardial infarction are less than 1% in patients identified as low risk. And that it's also effective in that it reduces hospitalizations, shorten lengths of stay, and increases early discharges. Now, more recently, the study group here has looked into whether these benefits at 30 days could be extended to a year, which led to this randomized controlled trial in 2018, which compared the heart pathway to the usual care guidelines from the ACC and the AHA at one year. And in terms of the safety outcomes, the results were excellent in that it had a 100% negative predictive value for MACE in low-risk patients. Now that's major adverse cardiac events, which is a composite outcome for uh, all-cause mortality, myocardial infarction, and coronary revascularization. Um, however, when it came to the secondary outcomes, the rate of e repeat ED visits, hospitalizations, and objective cardiac testing was similar between the two groups. And so that led to the objective of this study, where we wanted to focus on one of those secondary outcomes and determine if the implementation of the heart pathway would safely reduce hospitalizations at one year in patients who presented to the ED with possible ACS. And so the design of the study was a pre-planned prospective analysis that compared risk stratification of ED patients with acute chest pain before and after the heart pathway was implemented in our hospital system. And so participants were accrued over a roughly two year period from the end of 2013 to the beginning of 2016. In terms of the study population, patients were accrued from three sites, the main site being Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center. And for the inclusion criteria, patients had to be ED patients who were older than 21 years old. They had to be investigated for possible ACS, and they had to have no evidence of STEMI on ECG. Now I've included a table here to help illustrate the timeline of the study. So there was a one year pre-cohort period where patients were stratified according to the usual care guidelines. This was followed by a three month wash-in period where providers were trained on the heart pathway and the heart pathway was integrated into the EHR, which I'll talk about on the next slide. And this was finally followed by a one year post-cohort period uh, where patients were stratified according to the heart pathway. And in total, there are almost uh, 8,500 patients that were included in the study. So in terms of the heart pathway implementation, uh, it was integrated to the EHR as a clinical decision support tool that acted as a interactive pop-up uh, that guided providers through their evaluation of patients presenting to the ED with chest pain. However, it was also possible to bring up the tool for patients who presented with a different chief complaint, but where acute uh, coronary syndrome was also on the differential, for example, if they presented with acute dyspnea or abdominal pain. And so after inputting information into the tool, uh, patients were then stratified into either a low risk category in which early discharge uh, without, stress testing, without stress testing or angiography was recommended or into a non-low non risk group where in which case hospitalization and further workup was recommended. And so one of the keys here in this study is that the treating provider had the ability to override the recommendation. And it was implemented in this way because we wanted the heart pathway to be a tool to guide care for a patient's individual scenario 
and not to be used as a substitute for clinical judgment. And I've listed the heart pathway algorithm here on the right side of this slide, uh, which I won't go into, but I did want to highlight just one feature, um, which is that in order to be identified as low risk and recommended for early discharge, uh, not only did the patients have to have a HERE score less than uh, from zero to three, but they also had to have a non-ischemic EKG, they had to have no known coronary artery disease, and they had to have two negative troponins, one at intake and one at three hours later. And this is a key distinction between the heart pathway and the heart score in that these extra factors allow the heart pathway to be more sensitive at picking up truly low risk patients uh, versus just the heart score alone. Now, in terms of the primary outcomes, we looked at effectiveness, which was uh, hospitalization rate at one year, uh, which we included inpatient admissions, transfers, and observation stays in our clinical observation unit. And for safety, we looked at a composite of death or MI at one year. Now, we used an unadjusted logistic regression modeling for our statistical analysis in which we looked at the pre and post implementation periods, as well as the rates of safety and utilization outcomes. And to compare our low risk versus non low risk groups, we looked at sensitivity, specificity, and the positive and negative predictive values. Uh, in terms of our cohort of results here, we looked at our post implementation cohort, which had 30.7% of patients who are identified as low risk and 97.5% of those um, were without death or acute MI within one year. And that corresponds to a sensitivity of 93.1%. Now, in order to put this 97.5% uh, negative predictive value into context, um, some studies of stress testing modalities have demonstrated uh, negative predictive values ranging from 95 to 99%. So in this study, the heart pathway was able to achieve a similar negative predictive value um, to those reported in stress testing trials but without any of the additional testing. And I've included some of the demographics of this cohort here on the slide in case you were interested. Now, in terms of our results, in terms of effectiveness, uh, we were able to show that um, the hospitalization rate was at one year was reduced by 6.3%, and that uh, was an absolute difference of 60.1 versus 66.4%. And in terms of safety, uh, the rates of death or MI at one year were also similar, and that's a difference of 11.6 versus 12.4%. And so this is key because the patients who were identified as low risk were discharged home uh, without causing more adverse cardiac events, which is really what would signify that the heart pathway is not a safe protocol. So in conclusion here, the heart pathway implementation was associated with a decrease in hospitalizations at one year with a high negative predictive value uh, for death or MI. And the clinical take home point is that the use of the heart pathway allows low risk patients to be safely discharged uh, without unnecessary and potentially harmful downstream testing and treatments. And I think it has big implications for our outpatient colleagues like our cardiologists and primary care providers as it supports a less aggressive approach to outpatient objective cardiac testing uh, for patients who were seen in the ED and stratified as low risk uh, using the heart pathway. And so that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have and I've listed my email here on the slide. Thank you all for listening.